morning, everyone. This is the seventh Sunday in the season of Easter, which means next week is Pentecost. This is also, as you all know, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. Great to have you all here. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. For all the moms. Absolutely. And, uh, and happy Mother's Day to all the kids who made their moms moms. And, and all the dads, too, for that matter. <laughs> so happy Mother's Day to everyone. We have a full morning this morning, and I'm going to get right to it because we want to make sure we have time for worship. <laughs> um, today is First Communion, and we've got one of our First Communion students here. Um, the kids got together last Wednesday night and made bread for communion today. So that's their little gift to us. So the bread you received this morning, made by the hands of the kids, and there's a little video slide of the pictures of them baking bread during the offering. So as you listen to the music, you might want to keep your eye on that and see what the kids were up to. Um, we have a baptism at the second service this morning, Bailey Rose Hansen. And we also want to spend just a moment thanking our Sunday school teachers because they're at the end of their season now. And what I'd like to do is see if we have any Sunday school teachers that are here. Um, they're listed in the bulletin, Sunday school teachers and leaders. And have you just come forward for a moment. We're not going to embarrass you much. We just want to be able to say hi and thank you. Do we have any of our Sunday school leaders here this morning? There's only one here. Only one. Well, come on forward. And Todd has something special to say. Yeah. So um, I was hoping that Jackie would be up here with the rest of the Sunday school teachers, so I asked her to come in here. But um, for those of you that don't know Jackie, for the last several years, in addition to serving as one of our Sunday school teachers, she's also been our faithful nursery attendant, one of the two. Taylor's also in there. And uh, so she... Um, she often attends worship when um, she's not in the nursery, but if you don't have kids, you would not know that she's even here, probably. So um, we just wanted to say thank you for her faithful service and present her with a small gift from the congregation. Um, she's graduating from UWSP next weekend, and we'll also recognize her at second service, but um, just a small gift of appreciation from us, from the con congregation. So. <laughs> And then, um, before our opening hymn, we have these, these Afghans that we give each year to the graduates, and our baccalaureate service is going to be May 27th, around the graduation time, and we always have a blessing of the Afghans. So, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, today as we give thanks for the mothers who have loved us, served us, and nurtured us, we thank you also for those gentle hands that have poured their love into the making of these gifts of warmth. Thank you for the devotion of the women who prepared these Afghans for our senior students. Bless these gifts and all who receive them. Let them be assigned to the students, especially as they leave their homes in pursuit of their lives and livelihoods. Of the love that has nurtured them here at Trinity, and as a reminder to return to us often, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise for our opening song.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I could invite any children that are here this morning to come up in front for our children's message. I saw a couple back there. Good morning. How are you? Good. Well, I brought this dinosaur book with me this morning, okay? It's a dinosaur book, and it's full of all kinds of pictures and different activities that you can color, and there's also some, some puzzles in here called mazes. You know what a maze is? Okay, this one here, you help the dinosaur take the right path to the middle of the forest, and there's another one that says you can help the dinosaur get away from the volcano or help, help him find his friends. There's all kinds of mazes in here. So you probably have a book like this at home, right? Have you ever done a maze? Have you ever done, tried to do a maze? How does it work? How does a maze work? Yeah, you're trying to find the right path without getting blocked. So you start out at the beginning of the maze, right? And then you take your line with your pencil or your crayon or your marker and you try to go. And what happens if you get to a spot that's blocked? What do you do? What do you do? You go back and you turn around and you try to take the right path or whatever. Well, um, in the fall, sometimes, have any of you ever been to a corn maze where you can actually walk through a maze and try to find your way out? And you, sometimes you walk with your family or friends and you come to a place where it's like a dead end. Then you have to turn around and try to find the end, right? Well, sometimes our lives, like every day, can be like a maze, right? Sometimes we have situations where we we don't make the best choices and we come to a spot where we seem like we're stuck, right? Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever had a tough day where you kind of feel like you're stuck and things aren't going right? And you have to kind of rethink and, and turn around and maybe try a different way of, of doing things? Or if you're stuck in life, you can ask someone to help you. Like today we honor moms or, or people who are like moms in our lives, grand, grandmothers. We can ask them to help us, right? If we feel stuck, or we could ask our family, our brothers and sisters, or our friends. And who is someone else we can go to? Think of someone else we can go to? Well, yeah, aunts and uncles, or family, or cousins, yeah. But we can also go to God. You have two cousins, yep. Yeah. Cousins are great. So 
what, what we can do when we're, when we're feeling stuck, you get to see them sometimes? That's great. Hey, your grandmas, that's great. Two aunts and three uncles. Yeah, family is great, and family is a great family. There's some great people that God puts in our lives to help us through things, right? Well, in one of our readings today, um, Jesus is getting ready to go back to be with his father, right? And he says a prayer for his friends, the disciples. And he says that um, he's not going to be right there with them anymore. And he asks that his father, God, will protect his friends, protect them. And that same prayer that Jesus made for his disciples, his friends then, is what he, he says to us too. That no matter what happens, no matter how stuck we get in the maze called life, that we can go to God and, and we can pray to God and ask him to help us, help us make the right choices. And God sends all kinds of special people to our lives that can help us through things and help us get to the end of, of difficult things like a maze in our life, okay? So that's something really important to remember. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, there are a lot of different things we know we will face in life. Help us to know when we feel stuck or lost that you are always there to help us. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. Have a great week.
Good morning. The first reading is a reading from Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the day that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day that he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Word of God, word of life. The epistle reading today is a reading from 1 John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Word of God, word of life. for today is taken from the Gospel of John, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that you may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. So I have sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we hear a lot about fake news these days, don't we? Now, I don't want to get into all the things that might or might not be in the fake news, but I do want to point out that what fake news really means is that there are many lies being told to us, 
many lies that we have to contend with every day. The lies are all around us, and actually we spend all of our lives trying to sort out what's the truth and what's not true. Sometimes there are lies that people tell children. We know that positive words and compliments can shape good habits and behaviors and personalities. We know that they can create respect and consideration for others. They can create obedience and discipline in kids. They can help kids discover their talents and their gifts. But we also know that negative words have power as well. The power to tear down and destroy. Lies like, you are no good, you will never amount to anything, you, you never do anything right. You ever heard that shared with a young person? Now these negative words are not true. They are lies about those young people. They do not reveal the truth about them, any truth about what they might become. They're fake news. Children, and perhaps all of us, need to be protected from the lies that put limits on our lives. Now today on Mother's Day, it's really good to remember that some of the greatest truth tellers that we ever will encounter are our mothers. They tell us when her fingernails are dirty. <laughs> they tell us when we need a bath. Moms are usually the first ones to know when our diaper needed changing. Mothers also have an uncanny way of predicting the future. Did you ever hear the words, you're really going to be in trouble when your father gets home? And then somehow it turned out to be true. <laughs> Here's another one. How, how many of you were practicing an instrument as a child? You, you were raised to play an instrument of some kind? Right. Did you ever hear the words, someday you're going to thank me for making you practice? And how many of you now thank your mom? for having done that and said that. Of course, they, they have this uncanny way of predicting the future. Mothers also tell us wonderful truths, things like, you are special. You are loved. You can do anything you put your mind to. And then we do. And mothers can see the deepest truths about us that no one else can see. I know of a young man who was Struggling, struggling along through college. He couldn't pick a major, couldn't figure out what to do, and his father began to be worried. He's spending all this money on tuition, didn't have a major, and he thought he should get focused. And his mother took him aside one day and said, now just relax, don't you worry. He's going to be a pastor someday. And you know what? She was right. That fellow stands before you today. Thanks, Mom, you knew it all along. As truth-tellers, mothers are God's agents because we know that God is the author of all truth. Now our Gospel lesson today talks about the evil one who is the author of lies. And it also talks about how God will protect us from evil and from lies. And so these things go together and I'd like to share a bit about that today. Jesus tells us that the truth will protect us from the lies of the evil one and all of the fake news we might be fed. Lies that limit who we are or who we can be. Lies that limit our relationship with God. Lies that tell us that we're not really worthy of God's love and grace. Lies that make us doubt the love that God has for us. Sometimes the lies that we hear in the world can be subtle and very persuasive. You know, when you watch television, you see all of these advertisements. And they're really lying to us, aren't they? Telling us that we cannot be too thin or too rich, we cannot have too many possessions, or we can't live a complete life unless we buy their product. Television and movies tell us that we need plenty of excitement and sex and violence to be really and fully alive. And of course, that's a lie. Think about the lies that our kids hear. Kids like the ones that are coming forward for First Communion this morning. If you want to be cool, you have to try alcohol and drugs. And that's a lie. God's people need to be suspicious of all of these kinds of messages. They do not give an accurate picture of who we are or who God made us to be. These kinds of messages are nothing more than more versions of what you might call fake news. Now, why are we susceptible to these lies that are told about us? Well, 
A writer from the first epistle of John says this, when we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. You've heard those words before. We sometimes use them in our confession. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now, why are we so able to deceive ourselves? It's because sin does dwell within us and we can be easily misled believing the lies that the world pushes off upon us, lies about who we are or what we should do or what we can do to other people, lies about what will make us happy or content. And as Jesus prays in his message today, he's praying that God will protect us from all these lies. We need to know the truth as God sees it in order to live our lives and order our lives according to that truth. So my friends, fortunately, there is something greater than all of these lies that the world tells us, something greater even than the truth that we are sinful and unclean. There's something far greater to, than that. And that is this truth, this fundamental fact, that God loves us, that God has given his son to die for us so that we might have eternal life. That's the message of Christ. That's the message of this gospel story. We heard again in this first letter from John, he says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you will know that you have eternal life. That's the truth that he wants us to know. You know, it's also the truth that we talk about when our kids come forward to learn about First Communion and, and receive their First Communion. We met for the last couple of weeks and discussed some of these things together. They know that God has chosen to be with us in the bread and the wine. Now, we don't actually believe that strange story that the bread and the wine turn into some other substance, but we do believe that because he has promised, Jesus has chosen to come to be with us in the bread and the wine, and every time we reach out our hands to receive those gifts, we receive the presence of God with us. And with the bread and the wine come forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life with Jesus, in the bread and the wine are the promises of God and the truth of God. And with this truth comes a full range of related ideas that we belong to God, that we, are, we have a calling in the world to love and care for creation and for all of God's people, to spread God's word. The truth that our greatest fulfillment comes not through what we achieve or what we acquire in life, but through what God enables us to do. The truth that our greatest joys in life will come from the good and godly things we pursue. And that our greatest freedom in life comes not from doing as we please, but serving as God pleases for us to do. And in the face of that powerful lie that you may have heard as a child or along the way from a teacher or a professor or a boss or a coworker, the one that says, you're no good, you'll never amount to anything, you never do anything right, here is the great truth of God that will protect you. My friends, you are a child of God. God sent his son to die for you. God honors you so greatly that that is the cost, the price that God was willing to pay for you. So if you ever wonder what your value is, measure yourself by that value, by what God paid for your sins. We are blessed this morning at the second service to have another baptism. Bailey Rose Hansen will be baptized. And in that service of baptism, God tells us the truth about this young child, that she too is a child of God, that she will be sealed by the Holy Spirit to protect her all her life. She will be marked with the cross of Christ forever. So from today onward and all the way into her future, Nothing will ever separate her from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Today we are filled with gratitude for our mothers and their undying love, for our young friends who are receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion for the first time. We're grateful for the bread they made for us that we'll share later on this morning. And we're grateful for the baptism of, Hay of Bailey Rose Hansen. In order for God to protect our First Communion students, in order for God to protect Bailey in her life, in order for God to protect us all, 
Let us pray. God of truth, protect us from the lies that circle around us all our lives. Teach us to follow your ways. Lead us to discover who you have made us to be, what you desire for us to do, where you want for us to go. Unfold for us the unending surprise of your love and forgiveness. And teach us to uphold Bailey and our children and one another in the embrace of your people's love. We pray in Jesus' name. confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father of Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, like a father, you care for us and provide for us with generosity and mercy. Like a mother, you caress us with your love and hold us close, just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wing. Thank you for the depth and width of your grace. And thank you for our mothers and fathers who share your love in tangible ways with us all. God of grace, hear our prayer. Our earth needs your love, O oh God. While we try our best to sustain her beauty and reap her bounty, we often abuse her gifts and spoil her wonder. Teach us to care for our planet as you care for it. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
Our community needs your love, O oh God. We live in this beautiful and bountiful place. Use us to be agents of your love wherever we work or rest or play in Stevens Point and throughout all of our local neighborhoods. Let your blessings flow upon the fields and forests, the ponds and waterways, and all the new plantings and gardens and fields. God of grace, hear our prayer. Our people need your love, O oh God. We pray for all in need, in hunger, in want, and in pain. Today, we pray especially for Cindy, Mark, Pat, Ed, Lula, Kevin, and Judy family, and Judy family, and John's family. Bring comfort to Donna, Paul, Susan, Mary, Tyler, Logan, and Bill's family. Restore the health of Jim, Alex, Vicki, Niles, and Susan. We also pray for Tom, Ruth, and Pat. And we also have a prayer request for Galen that he find a stable environment and school. God of grace, hear our prayer. Our families need your love, O oh God. Be with the families of Jean Hutun and Ivan Phyllis, both of whom have come home to you and live anew in your presence. Be with the families as they mourn and give them the assurance that your promises are true and that one day we will be reunited with those we love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. Peace be with you, Dave.
Thank you to our kids for this beautiful gift of bread, and thanks for that wonderful music, ladies. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for your countless acts of mercy and grace through all the generations. Praise to you for blessed Mary, the mother of Jesus, who followed your will. Praise to you for the mothers of all people who echo your own selfless love. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus and for his death and resurrection. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all the nations. In the night in which he, was, which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Remember us in your kingdom, O God, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power As you're seated, we'd like to call forward, I think we just have one of our First Communion families. I'd like to have them come forward. They will be the first to receive communion, and then we will receive communion for all folks.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care. As you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly food, assist us, assist those who go forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick and homebound. In your love and care, nurture and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, keep you in his light and truth and love now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord in worship, witness, and service. <laughs>